Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today is Grade 6, Unit 2, Lesson 16, Practice Problems Review. In Question 1, describe a situation that could be represented with this tape diagram. Well, the first thing that I notice in this diagram is that we have a 3 to 2 ratio. I'm also noticing all these little 6s in here, and that this adds up to 18 and 12, which is 30. And so our question needs to involve something uh, with the 3 to 2 and something with our total of 30. And so what could this represent? How about 3 parts blue paint mixed with 2 parts green paint Combine to 30 cups of yellow paint. And then, of course, you could solve and figure out exactly how much, um, how many cups of blue and how many cups of green there would be. Now, question two there are some nickels, dimes, and quarters in a large piggy bank. For every two nickels, there are three dimes. For every two dimes, there are five quarters. There are 500 coins total. How many nickels, dimes, and quarters are in the piggy bank? And explain your reasoning. With this many different pieces, I think there, uh, a table could be very helpful here. And so if we start off with our columns of nickels, dimes, quarters, and then total. Let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. We're told for every two nickels there are three dimes and that for every two dimes there are five quarters. Well, I'm looking at that three dimes and two dimes going, what do I do? Well, let me ask you this. If we were to take this dimes to six, I would take three times two to get to six. So two nickels times two would be four nickels. Okay. Well, for every two dimes, I have five quarters. Well, two times three is six, and so five times three is going to be 15. And so that's how I can balance this ratio here. So I have four nickels, six dimes and 15 quarters, which gives me a total of 25 coins. Now, I'm trying to get that 25 to be up to 500. How do I get from 25 to 500? Well, it's going to be multiplying by 20. And so if I take each of these and multiply by 20, I'll end up with my solution. So it's going to be 4 times 20 is 80 nickels. 6 times 20 is 120 dimes. And 15 times 20 is 300 quarters. And now as I try to assess the value of these things, well, if I take five cents and multiply it by 80, if I take 10 cents, 0 0.10, and multiply it by the 120, and if I take the quarter, 0.25, and multiply it by 300, I'll get my solution. Well, these 80 nickels is worth $4. The dimes are worth $12 and the quarters are worth $75. So when I add 4 to 12 to 75, I get a solution for part B here of $91. Question 3. Two horses start a race at the same time. Horse A gallops at a steady rate of 32 feet per second, and horse B gallops at a steady rate of 28 feet per second. After five seconds, 
How much farther will horse A have traveled? Explain or show your reasoning. Well, you could use number lines. You could use tables. Uh, let's go ahead and start with a table here. If we have horse A, horse B, and we'll call this the diff, the difference. And it might help here to have a column as well for time. So after one second, horse A's traveled 32 feet per second. Horse B has traveled 28 feet per second. And right now we have a difference of 4 feet. If we go to 5 seconds, well, 1 multiplied by 5 is 5. And so what we need to do is take the 32 times 5, or 28 times 5, or we could just recognize also that I'm going to take this 4 times 5 to get 20. Now, I guarantee you this difference is going to be 20, but when I take 32 times 5, we're going to end up with 160 feet. When I take 28 times 5, I'm going to end up with 140 feet. And sure enough, when I subtract the two, I get an answer of 20 feet difference. Question 4. Andre paid $13 for three books, and Diego bought 12 books priced at the same rate. How much did Diego pay for the 12 books? Explain your reasoning. Well, I'm going to go with the table again here. If I have my cost and I have my books, $13 for three books. Now, 12 books at the same rate, I could break this down and do 13 divided by 3, or... I could recognize, wait a minute, if it's the same rate, 3 times 4 gets me to 12. So he bought 4 times the number of books at the same price. So I can take 13 and multiply it by 4 to get to my solution of $52 for those 12 books. Let's continue on to question 5. We're going to look at a polyhedron. All the way back to Unit 1, Lesson 15. What kind of polyhedron can be assembled from this net? Well, I see three sides that are the same with one base here. And since I have one base, I know I'm looking at a pyramid, so I can cross out the prisms. Well, when I look at the pyramid, then what shape is my base? It's a triangle. So that means it must be a triangular pyramid, which is A. On to our last question, question six. Find the area of the triangle. Show your reasoning. If you get stuck, consider drawing a rectangle around the triangle. Well, I don't have really any bases and heights that meet at a right angle here, do we? And so what we need to do is to go ahead and draw this rectangle in as best we can. And then we'll have to find the area of triangle A, B, and C here and subtract out from the entire uh, rectangle. Let's start with the rectangle first. This has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for the height and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for the base. So this rectangle is really a square. And this square, the entire square, is 5 by 5. And this area can be found by length times width, or 5 times 5, which is 25. Now, let's focus in on A here. This triangle has a height of 3 and a base of 2. And you can see the right angle here. And so you have a 2 by 3. Area is equal to base times height divided by 2. So 2 times 3 divided by 2 is 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So triangle A has an area of 3. Let's move on to triangle B. Well, triangle B 
looks like we're going to have a height of 5 and a base this time of 3. And you can see the right angle right there. And so for triangle B here, base of 3, height of 5. Area once again is equal to base times height divided by 2. So 3 times 5 divided by 2, which is 15 divided by 2, which is 7 and a half. Which lastly then takes us to triangle C. Now as you can see here in our purple object, we're going to have a height of 2 and a base of 5. And so, here for C, area once again is equal to base times height divided by 2. 5 times 2 divided by 2 is 10 divided by 2, which is 5. So now what we've done is we found the total area around this blue triangle. And what we need to figure out then is these three triangle areas that we need to subtract away. So the total area was 25. We found three, seven and a half, and five. And now to get the final answer here, we need to subtract all those three triangles away from 25. So if I take three, seven and a half, and five, and add these together, I get 15 and a half. Then lastly, if I take 25 and I subtract away 15 and a half, I get my answer of 9 and a half square units. And that's it for this grade 6, unit 2, lesson 16 practice problems review on solving more ratio problems. Good luck.